I just wanted to show you what the little baby looks like with the hat on, the beret. For the crochet beret hat, you're going to need your 3.75 millimeter crochet hook, as well as your darning needle or tapestry needle, and a pair of scissors. I'm just using my leftover Red Heart Super Saver yarn. It's a worsted medium four yarn. Here's some information on this yarn. It's pretty in pink. Here's how much yarn is in a skein. And then the other yarn is also Red Heart and it's a baby pink. Same information on this yarn. You can make different sizes for your beret hat. I made mine fit my model. This is my little baby model. She fits clothes that are three to six months of age. You just take a tape measure and you're gonna measure around the head, right around the forehead with your tape measure. So if you have a sewing tape measure, that would be easier. But then you just get the measurement around the forehead. You can also take your yarn, or I have this little bit of elastic that I'm going to use. I'm not going to pull the elastic, but I'm just going to loosely measure how large the the opening will be for the hat and that would be just going over the forehead of the head that you want to measure. In this case it's going to be my little baby model. If you like her little sweater I have a separate video tutorial for that and also her dress has a separate video tutorial and she also has a separate video tutorial for her little baby booties. These are the crochet precious angel baby booties. Then you would just take and measure the length on a ruler. Mine is about 16 and a half inches. You're going to start with the main color for your hat and you're just going to take your yarn, you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Then just take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb, then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for your slip knot. Just cinch down the knot and this is how my loop looks around my crochet hook. Then we're going to make a chain. So I'm just going to show you four of them. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside, and go through the loop for a chain. For my hat, I'm making a chain of 61. So that's two, three, four. Go ahead and finish the chain for the size of your hat. Again, mine is a chain of 61. Then you can see that my chain is approximately 16 and a half inches long. And the chain also fits around the forehead of the baby. So that's how I, I measure. So whatever size that you want for your hat, all you have to do is adjust the size of your starting chain, just like I showed you, and then the rest of the hat is made the exact same way. The only thing that you may change is the length of the hat, and then I'll show you where you would add more rows if you wanted to add more, add, um, more length to the hat. Now, to continue with our hat, the next thing that you're going to do is just take your crochet hook. You're going to go into the second chain from the hook. You're going to bring up a loop. Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both of the loops for a single crochet. And then we're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. So go ahead, finish making one single crochet in every stitch back across and then come back. This is how my work looks so far. I just finished my last single crochet for that second 
Actually, I'm going to call it the first row because the first chain I'm not going to count. Then we're going to move up to the next row. So go ahead and make a chain of one. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for your first chain. Then turn your work, and you're going to go into the next stitch over. So you're not going to go into the base of that first chain one that you made. You're going to go into the next stitch over and make your single crochet. And this will be our last row of the one single crochet in every stitch. When you get to the end, come back and then I'll show you how to change colors and then work our single crochet spike stitch back across. So we just finished our second row of one single crochet in every stitch and before we change colors we're going to go ahead and join into a round. So take and fold your work in half. Just make sure you don't twist it. Then you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into the top stitch of that first single crochet on the opposite side. I'm trying to get into that stitch. There we go. And then, so that would be on the opposite side of where you have your loose yarn end. Then you're going to make a slip stitch, so you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then just set your work down, and you're going to get your tapestry needle. Put your tapestry needle onto that loose yarn end at the bottom, and you're going to take and sew the bottom edges together. And then your hat is in a ring for the opening of the hat. I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot here, and I'll bury the loose yarn end later. But here you can see how large your opening is for the hat. Then you're going to take and change colors. So you're going to take your new color, whatever color you want for your single crochet spikes, and then just bring up a loop, chain one, and then you're going to take and tie a knot. You can go ahead and cut the previous colored yarn. And then tie your knot. And then we're ready for the single crochet spike stitch round. So make sure you carry your loose yarn ends. We're going to bury them as we work. So the first thing you're going to do is make a chain of one. Then normally we would go into the next stitch here, but we're going to go into the stitch below. So you're going to go right below in the space below the single crochet, the next stitch single crochet for your spike stitch. So you take your crochet hook go down in that stitch below the single crochet. You're going to bring up, go behind your loose yarn ends, bring up a loop, bring the loop up level with your chain one, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then go through both loops to complete your spike stitch. Then you're going to go into the next stitch over, you're going to go behind your loose yarn ends, you're going to bring up a loop, and you're just going to make a regular single crochet. And you're going to alternate this pattern all the way around back to the beginning. So you're going to go in the stitch below the next stitch, next stitches single crochet. You're going to go behind the loose yarn ends, bring up a loop, bring the loop level with your previous the, la the previous stitches single crochet. You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops for your spike stitch. 
Then you're going to go into the next stitch, go behind your loose yarn ends, make a single crochet, and you're just going to repeat this all the way back to the beginning. So now I have my spike stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my loose yarn ends now and just show you without the loose yarn ends in the way. So I'm going to make a single crochet into the next stitch. Then I'm going to make a spike stitch. And then it just creates this gorgeous pattern in the hat. Now I'm back to where I started. So I'm going to finish with my single crochet. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook. Now this is where you can change colors back to your light pink if you want. For mine, I'm going to keep, keep the pink color, the hot pink color, for my snapdragon stitch. And then I'm going to change colors. So the first thing you're going to do is just chain three. One two, three. Then you're going to skip three stitches, one, two, three, and make five double crochet into that fourth stitch. So you just yarn over, go into that fourth stitch, make five double crochet into the same stitch. Then you're going to skip three more stitches and then make your V stitch into the fourth stitch. So skip three stitches, make a double crochet, chain one, then make a double crochet into the same stitch and that will complete a V stitch. And you're just going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to the beginning. This is called the snapdragon stitch. So you skip three, make five double crochet in the same stitch, skip three, make your V stitch, which is a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. I'm going to make one more set with you. So I'm going to skip three, make five double crochet into that fourth stitch. Then I'm going to skip three stitches and make a double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the same stitch, and then repeat. So go ahead, repeat this pattern all the way around back to the beginning, and then come back. So now I have four stitches left and I have, I'll be back to where I started. Actually this will be the fifth one here. But what you're going to do is you're going to skip two stitches. I just finished a V-stitch, so I'm going to skip two stitches, work five double crochet into that third stitch. Then I'm going to double crochet into the same stitch as my initial chain three. So just yarn over, go into that same stitch as that first chain three that we made. Then chain one and then slip stitch into the top stitch 
of that first chain three. So just yarn over, bring the yarn through both loops on the hook, and then you finish with the V-stitch. Now I'm going to change colors back to my pink color, or I should say light pink color. So now, after you've, you may already have the same color as me, but um, what we're going to do now for this next row is we're going to increase the number of stitches around. So this is going to be what's called the increase round. The first thing you're going to do is just chain two, one, two. That's going to count as your first half double crochet for the round. And then in the next stitch over, you're going to make two half double crochets. So go ahead and yarn over. You're going to go into the next stitch, go behind your loose yarn ends, bring up a loop, and then you're going to make a half double crochet. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. And we're going to make two half double crochets into the same stitch. So you just yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, and then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a half double crochet. So you're just going to alternate one half double crochet, two half double crochet, all the way around back to the beginning. So I'm just going to make one more set with you. I'm going to make one half double crochet into the next stitch, and then two half double crochet into the second stitch, and then repeat. One half double crochet in one stitch, two half double crochet into the next stitch, and then just come back when you reach the beginning. So then, when you reach the beginning, you can go ahead and make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain two that you made. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook. So for mine, I ended up with 96 stitches around. Don't worry if yours is not exact, as long as it's close. We're just increasing the number of stitches so you create the beanie look for the hat. Then. You're going to make a chain of two, one, two, and this is where you want to have one half double crochet for every stitch around. So you can go ahead and leave a mark, a yarn marker where you started. That way you'll, you can, sometimes it's hard to tell with the chain two where it is that you started. So just so you know where you started your initial stitch. Then you're just going to make one half double crochet in every stitch around. So this is where you want to make sure you have the same count as the previous row. So every time I come back to this first chain two, I should have 96 stitches. And the reason I say that is because you don't want to decrease your number of stitches and you don't want to increase your number of stitches because then it will mess up your hat. And for those of you that want a little bit more length to your hat, this is where you can add more row, rows. So for mine, I'm going to be making eight rounds. But for this first round, come back when you come back to your yarn marker, and I'll show you how to slip stitch and then move up to the next round. But for those of you that already know what to do, I'm going to be making eight rounds of one half double crochet into every stitch around. So I just finished my eighth round and you can see how your um, slip stitches will make a little bit of a diagonal seam. That's normal. So we're going to place that towards the back of the hat. But now I'll go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up. We're going to start making our decrease rounds now, which means we're going to decrease the number of stitches in the round. The first thing you're going to do is just make a chain of two, one, two, and then you're going to make one half double crochet 
into 10 stitches. So this first chain two counts as one, and just yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, yarn over and go through all three for a half double crochet. And then you're going to make a half double crochet into a total of 10 stitches. I'm just going to show you one more. Go ahead and finish making your half double crochets into 10 stitches and then come back. So now after you finish making one half double crochet into 10 stitches, then you're going to make a half double crochet decrease stitch. So you just yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, you have three loops on the hook, yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, now you have five loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through all five loops for a half double crochet decrease stitch. And then you're going to just repeat this pattern, one half double crochet into 10 stitches and then your half double crochet decrease stitch. So one half double crochet into the next 10 stitches and then come back and I'll make one more half double crochet decrease stitch with you. Now after you finish your 10 one half double crochet into 10 stitches. We're going to make our half double crochet decrease stitch. So you yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, five loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then bring the yarn through all five loops for a half double crochet decrease stitch. So go ahead, repeat that pattern all the way around, back to your yarn marker, and then come back. So I just finished my last decrease stitch, so I'm going to go ahead and make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain two that I made. And then you're going to get ready to move up to the next round, which is also going to be a decrease round. So you chain two, and you can just leave your yarn marker in place because it will help you to see where you are as you're crocheting around. So for this decrease round you're going to be making one half double crochet into nine stitches. So this first chain two counts as one half double crochet. Now I'm making a half double crochet into the next stitch. So go ahead make one half double crochet into nine stitches and then come back. So now I have a total of nine half double crochet including that first chain two that I made. Now I'm going to make a half double crochet decrease stitch. So I'm going to yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, go into the next stitch and bring up a loop, then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through all five loops. And then repeat. So one half double crochet into nine stitches and then your half double crochet decrease stitch. Repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn then marker. Then you're going to make for the next round one half double crochet into eight stitches and then make your half double crochet decrease stitch. So you can see how it keeps decreasing. So in the next one it would be one half double crochet into seven stitches and then your half double crochet decrease stitch and then six and then five and then four and then three all the way down until you're almost closed and then come back. So I just finished my last decrease round of one half double crochet into three stitches and then my half double crochet decrease stitch. You can see how I'm getting close to being closed. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain two and then I'm just going to make a round of decrease stitches, half double crochet decrease stitches. You just yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, and then yarn over and go through all five loops. And you're going to do this all the way around just making half double crochet decreases all the way around back to where you started. Now 
You can see how small the opening is. Now I'm just going to make slip stitches to close. So you just take your crochet hook, you're going to skip a stitch, you're going to go into the next stitch with your crochet hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. And you're just going to do this all the way around until the opening is closed and then come back. Then when the top of the hat is closed, go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then I just took and brought the loose yarn in into the inside of the hat and I'm going to show you how to make the little button that goes on the top of the hat. If you don't want the button and you like the pom-pom, I like using my Clover pom-pom maker. They have different sizes and just it makes um, making a pom-pom really easy. You can see how it opens up and then you're able to make your pom-pom. Um, if you don't want to use this device and you want to use a cardboard method, homemade cardboard method, you can go to my crochet Sleepy Owl baby hat and I show you how to make a pom-pom using cardboard. Now for the button, you're just going to take your whatever color yarn you want for the button and just drape it across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. Wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. We're going to make a magic circle. So you just take your crochet hook, put it right under those two loops around the middle fingers, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for your slip knot. Then you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. So six single crochet into your magic circle. Then just take your forefinger and thumb and hold the base of the six single crochet. You have the two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one. Don't worry if you don't get it completely closed. We'll close it more later. Then take the loose yarn in and pull on that. Then just turn your work. We're going to be working in rounds. So you're going to take your crochet hook, go into that first stitch. Make two single crochet into the same stitch. And then you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches. And then come back. So two single crochet in every stitch around. Now you can take and turn your work over if you want to pull on that loose yarn end to close up the center of the magic circle. Then just take your yarn, place it right where you left off, and we're going to make an increase round. For the, we're only going to make one increase round. So in the next stitch, you're just going to make one single crochet. And then in the second stitch, you're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet in the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. So now that should give you 18 stitches in the round. Then go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up to where you left off. For two rounds you're only going to make one single crochet in every stitch. So one single crochet in every stitch around for two rounds. So then you should have a little cup after finishing two rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. You can go ahead and tuck your loose yarn end into the center. We're going to start closing the button now. Then go ahead and take your yarn marker and place it right where you left off. 
And then for this decrease round, which means we're going to decrease the number of stitches in the round, you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch, and then you're going to make your single crochet decrease stitch. So you go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch over, and bring up a loop, then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through all three for a decrease stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker, one single crochet in the first stitch, and then you're going to make your decrease stitch. Single crochet decrease stitch. Then you're going to take, you can leave your yarn marker where it is, we're just going to make decrease stitches all the way around for one round. So single crochet decrease stitches all the way around for one round. I'm going to make one more. Then you're ready to make your slip stitches to completely close the button. So you just take and skip a stitch, go into the next stitch over, then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. And you're just going to keep making slip stitches until the button is completely closed and that's good enough. Then I'm going to go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the button onto the top of the hat. Then you can just cinch down the knot, take your yarn marker out, and then you have a little button to put onto the top of your hat. So then you just take your tapestry needle put it onto the long end that you left for sewing on the button and just go right into the center of the hat and then you can tie a knot on the inside with the loose yarn end from the outside. If you don't have one then you can just tie a knot on the inside with your tapestry needle Then you just take and go back through the top of the hat because you want to come through the button just to kind of stabilize the button. So I just go right through the button and then back into the hat and then I'm going to come up on the other side. and then just go through the opposite side of the button. And then just go right back down into the inside of the hat and then tie a knot. Then you just want to turn your hat inside out and bury any of your loose yarn ends. So you just kind of weave the loose yarn end through the wrong side of the hat. Sometimes I'll go a couple of different directions just to make sure it's nice and buried. And then just trim the loose yarn in. Go ahead and bury any of your loose yarn ends and then come back. So now you want to take the front of your hat so the back of the hat is where you have the seam. And then in the front, you're going to want to measure where the ears are on your dog. So this is where I put um, a yarn marker in where the on the video it's the right ear. And then here I put the yarn marker where the left ear is. 
And this is where you're going to make your loops so you could put a chain loop to hold the hat onto your dog. Then just take the yarn color that you want to use for the chain loop. I would recommend the same color as the main color of your hat, but you can use whatever color you want. And then you're just going to take where you placed the yarn marker. You're going to take your crochet hook, go into that same space, go ahead and remove the yarn marker, and then you're going to bring up a loop with your yarn. Then go ahead and chain one, and then tie a knot. Then you can go ahead and count over 10 spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then in the eleventh stitch, that's where you're going to place the yarn marker. So now I know where I'm going to make my slip stitch. So I'm going to go back to where I tied my knot, and then I'm going to make a chain of 22. I'm just going to show you four of them. So there's one, two, three, four. Go ahead and finish a chain of 22, and then after come you back. make your chain of 22, then you can take and remove the yarn marker. And then you're going to make a slip stitch into that stitch. So just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And then you're going to repeat the same thing on the opposite side where you placed the other yarn marker. And then you have chain loops to hold the hat onto your dog. And this is what mine looks like with the two loops in place.